Hi everyone. In this video, I'm going to show you how to do basic calculations with scientific notation. In particular, I'm going to show you how to do these calculations without using a calculator. The first two examples I'm going to look at involve multiplication. Now multiplication is commutative, meaning you can multiply in any order. So I'm going to rearrange this multiplication expression like this. I'm going to take the 6.5 and the 2 and multiply those together first. Then I'm going to take the powers of 10 and multiply those together. Now 6.5 times 2, or double 6.5, is 13. And 10 to the power of negative 8 times 10 to the power of 4, I can use the first law of exponents, which says if I've got a power with one base times by a power with the same base, I add my exponents. So here, my common base is 10. So I have 13 times 10 to the power of negative 8 plus 4. That simplifies to 13 times 10 to the power of negative 4. Now surely I'm going to want to write my answer in scientific notation. And the way you write things in scientific notation is that you need to have a comma after the first digit. Let's see, what did I do to get from 13 to get to 1,3? I divided by 10. Now, the way that scientific notation works is that it doesn't change what the value of the number is. So if I divide the number by 10, to compensate, I need to multiply the power by 10. And 10 to the power of negative 4 times 10 will give me 10 to the power of negative 3. Another way to do this multiplication would be to expand each part of the scientific notation and then multiply. Let me show you how. So the first part of the question is 6.5 times 10 to the power of negative 8. So that will be 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 6, 5. Let's just double check that. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, yes, times by 2 times 10 to the power of 4 is going to be 20,000. That's quite a tricky question to multiply. Remember, when you multiply decimals, you normally have the same number of decimal places after the comma as they are together in the question to start. So at the moment, I've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 places after the comma. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 places after the comma. And if I'm multiplying by 20,000, that's the same as multiplying by 2 by 10,000. So I know that the end will have four zeros on it. Now, 65 times 2 is 130, and the rest of the spaces will be zeros. So if I write that a little neater, it's 0 0.0013. So to write this in scientific notation, I need to have 1.3. What I did here was I multiplied by 10 to the power of 1, 2, 3. So I need to do the opposite times by 10 to the power of negative 3. And there's my answer. So can you see by expanding everything out, firstly, you create the opportunity to make a mistake because there's when you expand out, you might leave out a zero. Next, you have the challenge of multiplying with decimals. And if you aren't comfortable with that, you could make a mistake there too. Also, imagine you had longer numbers. That could also take a long time. So I'm sure you can see that the first method I showed you is a lot faster. Let's look at another multiplication example. Again, I'm going to group my multiplication in a different order because I can multiply in any order. So 4.2 times 3 times by 10 to the power of 6 times by 10 to the power of 10. Now 4.2 times 3 4.2 plus 4.2 is 8.4. And if I add another 4.2, I'm going to get 12.6. So I get 12.6 times by 10 to the power of 6 plus 10. That will simplify to 12.6 times by 10 to the power of 16. However, since I was given the question in scientific notation, let's answer in scientific notation too. So the comma needs to be after the first digit. How did I get from 
0.6 to 1.26. I divide it by 10. Now to compensate, because I don't want to change the value, I'm going to multiply by 10. My exponent or my power is going to be 10 to the power of another 10, 17. If you did this question by expanding both scientific notations and then multiplying them together, can you see that it would take you a lot more time and it might be less accurate because you could make a mistake with all the zeros than working the way I've done. The next examples I'm going to look at deal with adding. Now adding is different from multiplication because when you add, you can only add like terms. Here I have two terms, 8.62 times 10 to the power of five and 5.31 times 10 to the power of seven. Now, if you had a question like this, 8.62 times a to the power of 5 plus 5.31 times a to the power of 7, you would say that these are not like terms. And I have the same situation here. Because I have 10 to the power of 5 and 10 to the power of 7, these are not like terms. But the nice thing with scientific notation is that I can change one of the terms to be like the other. I find it helpful to keep the larger of the two. So I'm going to have plus 5.31 times 10 to the power of 7. And I'm going to try to change my first scientific notation term so that it has times 10 to the power of 7. Now, like before, I need to compensate because what I've done to get from 10 to the power of 5 I've multiplied by 10 squared. Now to compensate so that the value of this term doesn't change, I need to divide the first factor by 10 squared. That means my decimal place is going to move left. 0 0.0862 times 10 to the power of 7 plus 5.31 times 10 to the power of 7. Now I've got like terms. So whatever I add together, is going to be times 10 to the power of 7. Let's add them together here on the side. 0 0.0862 plus 5.31. And these I can put zeros in for placeholders. 2, 6, 9, 3, 5. And so I get 5.3962 times 10 to the power of 5. Out of interest, if I want to round this to two decimal places, I would just write this as 5.40 times 10 to the power of 7. Here's the last example I'm going to discuss with you today. Now, again, I'm adding with scientific notation, or you could say I'm subtracting. I'm adding a negative number. And again, I've got a situation where I don't have like terms. I've got times 10 to the power of negative 6 and times 10 to the power of negative 8. I find it easiest to start with a larger number, 10 to the power of negative 6, 9.85 times 10 to the power of negative 6. And what I'm going to do with the second term is I'm going to write it with the power 10 to the power of negative 6. Now what I've done to get from 10 to the power of negative 8 to get to 10 to the power of negative 6, I've multiplied by 10 squared. So to compensate, I need to divide by 10 squared. And so I get 0 0.044 times 10 to the power of negative 6. Now I've got like terms. So I know that whatever I do with the values before the 10 to the power of negative 6, I'm still going to have 10 to the power of negative 6 in my next step. Let's do the subtraction quickly on the side. 9.85 minus 0 0.044. Let's put zero in as a placeholder there. And I'm going to have to do this quickly. You might su subtract differently from me. You might use a different method for, me for this kind of subtraction without a calculator. That doesn't really matter. 9.806 times 10 to the power of negative 6. You might be wondering, what would have happened if you made both your terms have 10 to the power of negative 8? Let's take a quick look. So I'll write out the question again, 9.85 times 10 to the power of negative 6 minus 4.4 times 10 to the power of negative 8. And let's say you chose 
to make both terms have times 10 to the power of negative 8, which means your second term is left unchanged. Now the first term, what I've done is I've divided by 10 squared for the powers. So my first factor I'd need to times by 10 squared, which means that the decimal place will move 2 to the right, 985. So if I had 985 minus 4.4, that would give me, that's 4 and 1, 6, 0, 9, 8. So I get 9, 8, 0, comma 6 times 10 to the power of negative 8. But since I want to give my answer in scientific notation, I'll need to move things around a bit. So I'll have 9.806. And what I've done here is I have divided by 10 squared. And so to compensate, I need to times by 10 squared. And I get times 10 to the power of negative 6. I get exactly the same answer. Like I said earlier, I find it easier if you start with the larger number and then you change the other. Because then you often don't need to change things around right at the end of the question like I've had to do in this step here. Let's wrap up. If you're doing calculations with multiplication and scientific notation, remember you can multiply in any order. That's known as the commutative property. Then what I suggest you do is you multiply the 10 to the power of some things together by adding the exponents. So law one of the exponents says I'm going to add exponents, keep base, 10, and I'll multiply the other constants together. With addition, you can only add like terms. So what you need to do is you need to rewrite terms so that they have the same exponent for the times 10 to the power bit. Then you can add like terms. Some people find the concept that I've just shown you quite tricky. So I suggest if you're one of these people, maybe go back and watch the video again. It might make a bit more sense the second time round.